and a splice game. Lose early. Seems like, okay, there's nothing they can do. Go to late game, and this was with the Zillion Caitlyn comp. And then Carby is like, okay, great. This is a perfect fight. No one is actually touching him at the moment, and he just gets, like, one kill. They speed him up, he gets another kill. And in the end, he gets a pentakill, and Splice picks up wins. And this has, again, been most of their games so far. And Schalke, after watching this, in the bigger man face, banned the Caitlyn. Smart. Banned it. Don't want to see it. Jinx also taken off the board. Interesting that a lot of hyper carries are being taken away. I, I assume that there's something that we don't yeah, know about the Jinx. A, that's a scrim thing, definitely. Yeah. Skarner remains a, a pretty much a perma ban here in Europe since this week has started. Now Kalista taken off as well. And despite Kabe being one of the strongest members of the team, it looks like they do not want him to have a bad matchup against Upset. Galio's still open. Uh, Nukeduck played really well on Galio when we saw him uh, a few weeks ago, and then when we saw him last, last week, week against Caps, he chain fed in the lane for no reason at all. So 50-50 uh, on that one. I think it's a pick that could be very good for Niski. Uh, his TF performance was great. Galio can kind of do the same thing, but it's all about playing for side lanes and not for him. That could benefit Spice a lot. Uh, first pick, Tristana is there, and uh, typically, again, European teams are like, oh, Tristana, gotta lock that. It's been so good. The resets, the safety, this... AD Carry pretty much does it all on her own without the need of any other real picks to set her up. But we're going to see what kind of strategy Splice want to go towards. And we were waiting, Deficio, to see if Splice could consistently execute something that was not late game team fighting. And it looks like they may try to prove that here. Camille, a big lock in, but it does mean they're probably going to give up the Tristana. Yeah. That surprised me as a first pick. Now, you can put a jungle, so there's some flex option with it, but. You ban the Jinx, which is a clearly a scrim thing, to then first pick Camille and give over Tristana. That makes zero sense to me. You could have banned the Tristana then, uh, and then if enemy bans the Camille, worst case, you first pick Sijuani, or you first pick, like, Rise. But I, I think... I mean, I, I like the Camille Galio. I absolutely love that combo. We talked about Niski playing Galio is a great thing. Just the way it kind of was set up with the Jinx ban, I think that could have been Tristana ban instead. But potentially a bait from Splice saying, haha, you won't ban the Camille because you're going to trade it. And I think that's a little bit too many mind games. Yeah. And I, I, the biggest issue for me is a lot of good picks have been given over to Shaka that aren't just good picks in the meta, but are good picks for the players, right? We saw Pride be a big part of the engages that helped Shaka bring home their win yesterday. The good news for Splice, though, is that I do like, as you mentioned, Galio feels like it will be a good pick for Nissa. Yeah, yeah. Kabe exactly. still on a pretty decent carry in form of Zaya, but Vizichachi on Gangplank, Pride on Zac, Upset on Tristana. This is feels like a formula for su uh, success on the side of Shalka. I mean, it's very, very standard uh, on Shalka's side. I love Zac so much. I think he's kind of become my favorite jungler uh, to watch in the games because he gives you so many ways to start fights, and typically, uh, that's where some teams struggle. Uh, when it's like, okay, we don't have hard engage, how do we actually do this? We gotta bait around an objective and kind of falls, uh, falls flat pretty often. So I think Zach just gives you so many ways to always force a team fight. Uh, of course, GP on top side, we know it's gonna be to scale yep, yep. for Visit Chachi. And we've seen how that champion can keep up even at severe CS deficits. But interestingly enough, multiple supports ban now coming out. And I feel like this is the risk of Splice picking Zaya without the Rakan as they of lose course. a lot of the good parents. I think they're looking at all the AD carry bans plus Trisana already taken, saying this is the best remaining AD carry. I still think Varus was there. They could have grabbed later on, which could have been fine or maybe even better without the Rakan. I just want to see support options. Uh, again, standard is like Braum, Tom Kent, Tarek. I want to just mention Morgana. Not that I think Morgana Zaya specifically is that amazing, but when you have Camille and Galio, the combo is always Camille dies and in and Galio ults. But and funny Tristana enough, ult. on a completely different splice lineup, we saw the Morgana Galio Camille true, combo yeah. work. We and saw that against you too. Now, interesting thing as we talk more about Zach, 70% win rate currently in Europe this split. It's good. Clearly rising is a huge priority jungler. And like him with Tarek even more because then you can apply the stun with the Zach flying in. So great. Engage options on Schalke's side, and they have the Tristana all to try and peel away uh, the Camille when she jumps in. Let's see, is it gonna be Camille top auto and they pick a different jungle, or do they put the Camille jungle and say, okay, we wanna run a specific uh, counter pick maybe to GP? Nar is up and available, it has had really good lane matchups. Uh, Jax, jungle Jax, more likely a jungler, yeah. Support wise, Braum is still there, and Tom Kench available. Braum is fine here, uh, Braum is always fine, he's just generally great. But again, do they want the Black Shield to make sure Camille doesn't get knocked out when she goes in? And can they afford to not tank, take a tanky support in terms uh, of team it's, it's risky. It's definitely risky for them. 
It is. Zillion also is available for Kasing. I think Brahmus is a safe choice in any situation. Yeah, Brahm it's is a open. really good support, as it turns out. The ability to block 80 carry damage, the ability to disengage. But Deficio, I feel like Splice are all in on individual players. Right, you're probably going to get Corky, but I would like Talia uh, coming in from Nuke Dark. I think it's a great pick against uh, Galio. I think it's really good at punching sides. Ryze actually still available, interestingly. Okay. Some teams don't like playing Ryze anymore. They feel like he's too snowbally. Uh, he needs to snowball too much to really be strong. Yeah. So they're like, ah, just go for safe for late game. And to be fair, snowballing as a Galio not always an easy thing. Kind of just neutralizes a lot of the lane matchups. Now, Deficio, we have two full compositions locked in. I am no genius, but I feel like Shalka have pretty clear goals as to what they want to do in this game. Oh, on their side, when you have Gangplank on one side lane, Ryze in the other one, Tristana can always hold mid. You get that standard setup where you can play all three lanes, but it always comes down to team fighting when you look at a draft like this one with Tarek and Zach. Same on the other side. I just feel like more pick potential on Splice's side. I love Camille Gallio. We talk about it over and over because you can't get out of that Camille ulti and Gallio ulti will land on you. And then Zerze's Jax was okay last time he played yeah. it, but it's not really his play style uh, often. Like he's not the, the kind of guy to just take over in a side lane as a Jax jungle and dominate the game. I want to see what he can do. And I want to see what Copy can do in Zaya without Rakan. That's going to be really interesting, because we've seen how devastating the pick can be. We saw it yesterday in the hands of Reckless and Hillisang, how when you find great engages, it can just cut through teams. But without that nice bit of mobility, extra bit of engage, this is a much more defensive lane than we may have expected. But two very interesting compositions. Shalka keeping it standard in the meta as kind of expected. And Splice continue to mix it up in the draft. Going with a lot of bold choices. Yeah, we definitely have to say, banning the Jinx instead of a Tristana to then not first pick the Tristana is very unusual here in Europe. Take that Camille for Udo Amner, say, okay, we know this is the champion he can actually take over in the side lane with. We saw it against Giants where he successfully did it. We had that 1v2 play against Steelback and Ruin. This game against the GP, he's not going to be too scared uh, going up against Chachi specifically. And he knows there's always backup from Niski. And I'm really glad to see Niski get on a support, or sorry, not a support, but on a mid lane that can be supportive uh, because he's not been the biggest carry on his own. Definitely has been the case. He's had some good moments. He's had some really weak moments as well. It seems like Spice have identified that he serves the utility role much better. See how he does up against Nuke Duck. Nuke Duck, of course, a terrifying rise. Last season has been doing pretty well this season as well on the champion. Minions have and spawned. As we check in on itemization, you can see Gangplank taking what is now kind of a standard early support item for the Bandit passive. Mm -hmm. Has opted for Spell Thief's Edge, though, a little bit different. It seems like every top laner has a personal preference in terms of what they want to pick. At the end of the day, it's all the same. It's all gold generation. The Bandit proc is yeah, always going to be the 10 gold on the parlay. Right, let's see what else we have here. Bottom bottom side of the Tarek Tristana, super safe lane from Schalke's side. We saw yesterday that it's not about winning bot lane for upset and band. We've seen that back in Challenger as well. It's been a lot about get to team fights with the Zhang 80 carry and then make sure that he can actually jump forward and play aggressive. Yeah, and it's interesting because last time they played it was actually Schalke who was very much in control of the early game, not playing towards more of a late game. Oh, wait, 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 we got level back. two gang. I think you just got spotted, yes. The ward being placed there just spotted Zerze on the bottom side and another ward then in the river soil. But yeah, we got the gold graphs. This is what we just showed in the pick and ban phase where it was a dead even game until we got far enough in that copy was actually so strong. Oh, sorry, it was a dead even game for the first 30 minutes and then Schalke took over. We were calling it a win already. Hype, football club, all that kind of stuff. And then suddenly, Zillion and Caitlyn made yeah. It's possible for Turns Kobe out it's to hard get to get on top of a Zillion, Caitlyn, Vigar. He's doing board. it again, Zerze. Uh, last time he was bottom, bottom side. Now the ward did disappear around to Drake, so he snuck his way in. He didn't even finish his Raptor camp because he saw Pride on this ward near the Raptor camp on Schalke's side. And therefore he knew, okay, I, can, I have a chance now to rush in and take away the blue buff. And this is ambitious, but it's also a bit of a punishment onto Pride for not securing his buffs early on. Of course, he's staying even in experience thus far, but will miss out on having the blue buff. 
can even do a Gromp if he wants to. I don't think Shaka can do anything to stop him. Pride will have to recall. He's very low after the first clear. And Odama gets a good little trade. Initial visit Chachi is staying even in CS. He has the minion dematerializer as well, so it should be pretty good for him. Pride actually taking some clever pathing. You can see the took the blast cone as well to try to sneak his yeah, way into this I, top lane. Oh, I don't know if I like it. Um, it's taken so long because he was about to recall. He then stopped that, and now Spice have time to collapse on him. I don't like this play at all from Pride. Very risky. Blast cone's available for Xerxes. He's going to take it. Goes over the wall. Pride needs to make his way out. Can he get out for the CC connects? Actually, looks like he manages to get away. That very well could have been first blood if he stayed around any longer. Will still get denied the camp. Still an advantage over to Splice, but high risk play there. That was very indecisive overall from Pride. After doing the grump on top side, he was like, okay, I'm low. I should go back. And he was like, wait a minute. I shouldn't go back. Okay, we now kind of figure out that Xerxes has taken our blue buff, so I'm going to take his. But if you wait so long, of course, Xerxes is just going to walk back to his own blue and stop you. So Pride had to go back. Ended up losing... Both blue buffs, and almost, almost lost his life. I wonder how it actually looked if we had the vision on, because he was in the brush and he snuck around the corner <laughs> when Zerze jumped over with the blast cone. I don't know uh, if he knew exactly where Pride would be. Yeah, Pride really just desperate to get some of this experience back that he lost from Camp Speed taken away from him. Does ward up the Raptors. Has not spotted Jax on the top side, so will not take the risk of invading yet. But once he goes back into his own jungle, they will know that he is there. Will mean that Xerxes can gank with a lot of confidence. But is this, it's interesting that Xerxes went for the gank here. I think he could just gone for power farm route. He had so many camps left to do. And if he just like took the two on top side, went down to Raptor, Pride can't really invade him. Uh, at this point, he's only like level three uh, on the Zac before he just took this Grump. So I understand Xerxes saw a big wave pushing against Kimbell. He's like, there's a chance. Chachi. Played it smart and just backed away. Uh, I think Zerze could have just gone for full power farming and get an experience advantage. And Chachi carrying much better in the early matchup than Ruin was, but now eyes on the play. That will be the stun connecting, but good input buffer on the rocket jump means upset makes it out to safety. Even trades in the bot side so far. And really just about every single lane going even right now. I have to follow what Nukeduck can do. Schalke early game often rely a lot on him to be successful, but when you're playing Rise against Galio, you can't kill the Galio. And if you go to the side lane, Galio follows with ulti. So it gets really difficult for Rise to kind of snowball the game in this specific matchup, unless you hard camp Niski. There's nothing to camp right now. He's sitting under his turret, uh, so that's not going to work for Nukeduck. And pretty difficult when both of your sources of damage are magic to dive a Galio in the early game. Even if you have the chain CC to lock him down, if he's sitting under that tower, especially when he goes for the early Abyssal Mask. So this looks like it may be more of a game about mid-game. The question is then, who actually has the advantage at that point in the game, officially? You got IH double zeal on one side for Upset. You got Essence Reaver on the other side for Kabi. It's this traditional build, so Zion one item and Tristan on one item. Uh, nothing fancy, you know, you don't have to be that insanely scared of them. Mid lane wise, I think that unless the Rise can really force picks, then Spice will be fine just kind of waiting and, and scaling. But as it is so often in this meta, the other team also fine doing that. It's like, oh, okay. I guess hey, we wait. just go late game team fights. You guys want to scale? We want to scale. And then we team fight in the end. I yeah. think though, Niski, what he can do is he can play aggressive on top side. Try and dive the gangplank. Because if you look at it, Odamna goes in, you force the stopwatch from Mr. Charge in the first dive, and then you back out, and you then dive him again a minute or two later. And you can actually kill the GP, you can take his turret. I think that's something European teams are not doing very often. And in this game here with a Galio, it's, it's, it's a bit easier, because you can just ult towards the yeah. top lane. Are good options there to kind of force these mid-game plays. We've seen teams with the Galio be proactive in the past. Misfits even, and I think one of the first games of the EU LCS did not work out for them. Can be played around but can also be brutally effective if teams are not ready for it. Jungler's now approaching level 6. Will be a nice bit of dueling power and tankiness added for Xerxes as opposed to a very nice engage, escape, just about everything kind of ultimate for Pride. Let's see here. Niski is moving bottom side with Xerxes. Remember, guys, there is a stopwatch on the Tristana. There is no Terrigal just yet, but it's a risky tower to have to go for. I, that's why I always prefer top side. If you run things like Camille, because you're only diving one member. 
and it's a lot harder for GP to stay alive. He's very low now. I think Niski, if he can push mid and go top, they, they force uh, Vesu Chachi away. Definitely is the case, and I think when we look at top lane, it's, I mean, Visit Chachi versus Oda Wamne is kind of such a historic matchup in EU LCS, and also, despite Oda Wamne really, really struggling this season, I like that Splice are continuously willing to give him these chances on these kind of carry-style champions. Yeah, they know he needs to be one of the carry players on this lineup for them to succeed. Niski really wants to go for this play we talk about. He's here now. Shot wall dive. Upsets on the way, though. They, they do get the flash. There's some very good wards also placed by Shalke on top side to spot the Galio moving. Now, Odamna needs to know that bot lane's gone missing, and there's a chance to come top. He clearly ignores it. Looking for a bit more of a chance to outplay. No, no what? Not going to use the stopwatch. Upsets in the middle of everything. He might go down too. Has to use heal to back out. Where was the stopwatch? He tried to bait it. I think he took more damage from that second Q from Odamna than he expected. That was a bad one from Chachi. Bot lane tower's going to go down this now. It's going to be a huge loss of tempo. Galio can take it. Galio can wait play the top. I don't know if Nuketog can actually kill the mid turret in time. I don't think so. So they lose first turret. Ah, uh, no, the no, GPO no. will buy it. They have, more, they have another Doesn't wave matter. coming. They have another wave coming. Yeah, there's another wave. Plus, there's Galio wave to the top. Spice gets this. Get it. Hey! It's the, wave. the wave. It's immediate. Nuketog can dive top, though. Look at this. Nuketog's on the way. Odamna's here, too. I mean, they need this to work or everything's going to fall apart. Going for a little bit more. Looks like he will get taken down. Niski is dead. Creep Wave is still so far away, though. Nuke Duck is going to get locked down under tower. He might get taken out. He's going to live, but... They're losing uh, Infernal Drake. Shalga tried to get something after what was a really bad play on their side. They did get one kill onto Niski. That was it. First turret gone. Infernal Drake and a kill for Splice. Let's see it again. Chachi wants to bait. What I'm here, this is actually really greedy what he's doing. Because the bot lane has been missing for a long time, so he needs to respect the Kush lane swap top. He goes in anyway because Niski spent so much time trying to set up this play, and it's all a bait. But I think Chachi did not expect the damage from Q plus Galio ult, and he didn't get to stopwatch. Had he just hit the stopwatch, bot lane would have arrived in time to try and turn this around. And maybe he still dies, but then Chalka can at least fire back. Right. The crowd feeling it. They like that there's early action. <laughs> the, the one play top lane. Crane's a good play. It was a, I mean, it's a... And very surprising misstep for Visachachi. Normally really good in mechanical scenarios. Well, we just saw before, he's played 218 games in the EULCS. That is the second most out of all top laners. Only destroyed by the old man Soaz. Old man Soaz. So wise. Doesn't even need flash anymore. That's the Soaz life. Now, however, Deficio, we do see the full lane swap come out. Schalke definitively behind now. Only 500 gold, but Camille with a kill is a pretty unfortunate situation for them to be in. We talked about snowballing for Splice. Is this enough to really get the ball rolling? As long as they can keep getting Odahamna further ahead, then yeah, I think it is. Because we looked at it before with Splice's comp. You have this Galio who can keep diving the Gangplank. This stopwatch might get used next time, and then Chachi's all out of defensive options on his side. I think those Shalga, as long as they keep it like this, with GP, Zach, Tristana, and Tarek, those are four insane late game champions. I think they're gonna be fine. Because I really like their late game. I just want to see more of this. More Wait, of it's this. the combo one more time. Galio's on the way in. Are we going to see the use of the stopwatch? Good patience comes in for Visichachi. Tries to make Orange's K. Not going to be enough. Still doesn't use the stopwatch. Thank you, Spice, for showing what you should do when you have Galio plus Camille against things like Gangplank. Slow scaling. Can't really kill you. Just destroy him. I don't think he should use stopwatch there. There's no way he survives. Yeah, just not going to be the case. Save it for like a potential tower dive. Let's see if uh, Spice can react fast enough to actually stop this. They have TP on Camille. If they move up here with Niski, they can stop this Rift Hill. If they deny this, they're going to be so far ahead because Niski's a coming. There is a ward there right in the river, but they have to be ready for a full on 5v5 at this rate. May just settle for bot lane pressure, denying a wave to visit Chachi. Oh, this is good. This is good. I like right it, Spice. Zone down. I like it. Good calls. Schalke do not have any advantage in any lane, so they don't have a free Rift Hill they can start, despite Niski showing bot lane. Gotta remember, double TP and Splice. They can always just TP up. And one of our biggest criticisms of Splice has been that they are been pretty abysmal at playing the early game, but this time they're playing much better. They're playing the 1-3-1 one, one strategy that we've seen be successful once or twice, reaffirming that this is something that they are good at. 
by just constantly punishing the top lane matchup. And we talked about why this Galio is so key for Spice. Why it was so important in the draft. Because we have seen now, it allows them to kill Chachi and still stop anything from top side because of double TP. It's really hard for Schalke in the early game to force any plays, so they have to just scale. I think even starting the Rift Hell there was, was a little bit greedy on Schalke's side, as it allows Spice to go in and stop them, force Schalke to jump away, and then it's just free Rift Hell for Spice. Instead, just delay, push top, push mid, and accept that you just want to scale. And for Schalke, they go from feeling okay about going even because they have better scaling to being a little bit worried about falling so far behind in the early game. Cersei on the run, no option to connect the stretching strikes there. And a bit grim. They can still hold, they can still survive under their towers if they move across the map correctly, but definitely the kind of early deficit Shaka were looking to avoid. Also because Chachi knows if he walks down this lane and he's not under his turret, he's probably gonna die. Uh, no one is forcing a defensive ulti from Niski because Shalga not making a play on the other side. It's hard against the Braum, the double TP. Splice on full control at the moment will just eventually get down enough turrets and there's another Infernal spawning in 1 minute 30 seconds. Could be good for him. Double Infernal. Four, four champions who are happy to have the AD or AP. Exactly what they want. Trinity Force is now com completed for the Camille as well so she is going to be even more of a dueling nightmare. Luckily for Shalka, Upset has completed the Static Ship as his first major item. Will allow him to clear a lot of the waves out. May not be enough, though. Sink can body block for the minions if necessary. Oh, do it. No. The best play as a Galio is when you walk in and you get every single small wrapped on that Q. Top lane tower falling. Yeah, there's the body block. Sink denies the minion kills. Pressure side lanes. Go even mid. It's all you need to do if you are a splice. And they keep doing it. And they do it really well. Chachi is scared every single time Odamne does anything. And he's like, yep, I might die here. And Odamne keeps controlling the lane. Ooh, denying the barrels too. Because you gotta remember, normally GP can like orange out of most things, and he's yep. like, haha. Doesn't work against their ult from Camille. You're not you're not getting out. You're not getting out. And also the stun. By the time you've cleansed out of the stun from her, she's already on top of you. She already gets the attack speed steroid, so it's not even... It's nice, it's nice to have the heal, but ultimately it's still unfortunate. You cannot stop the Camille from finding a way into melee range. They're gonna lose every out of turret now. Taken down. 3k Goldie to Fischio 15 minutes into the game. This is massive for Splice. It's so good to see Splice do this again. Because after the first game against Giants, we're like, yeah, yeah, that was one game. We need to see it a few more times before we really believe in the Spice early game. This one here, they're executing it very cleanly. I like this a lot. I think the punishing shall goes for being a bit greedy. Double Inferno. All three out of turrets down. Top lane turret? It's not gonna die. It's just Chachi. Niski and Odamna might actually just go up and kill him. And Spice proving that they're quite good at moving around the map. Sometimes don't have the strongest positional players, but... Definitely bring it home, the flash forward, no hesitation. There's the combo, rinse and repeat. Yeah, but now he can buy time because look at the minimap. Pride is underway, Nuke Duck's all the time. Comes, doesn't have the oranges, looks like he might go down. Visit Chachi still making it out to safety. Could escape, comes in from Pride. Wants to bring it in, Nuke Duck to do the damage. That's the turn and burn, making it all too predictable. Splice want to play it by the book, but Shalka have read the book. They know what's coming, and they turn it around. Oh, jump. Yeah, he's going to be going down. Chain CC. Tries to make his way out to safety. Not going to be enough. Slap him to a minion. Now kiss and walk it away. Chachi safety stopwatch for this moment. That's why I didn't use it early in the game. It's like, yeah, that's going to be Nobody one. combo alts visit Chachi three times in a row. That is definitely true. Odamna, it's like, ah, we got him. It's easy. But because of the stopwatch, Pride got in range, and Nuke Dog was running the entire time to be like, oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Ooh, more fights. Oh. TP now coming Revenge. in. They're looking to bring it back. Realm Warp. He's available. I don't think he has the mana, however. He's gonna back it out. Yep. His stopwatch. Buys time for Visit Chachi. Can they turn this? No. Nope. Barrels go, though. The rest of the team is ready to chase. They don't want the dive. Are gonna have to back off. Bit of an overstay. No, but upset you grabs. The podcast. You are correct. And Spice. Did you get that one? Did I force it too much? <laughs> I mean, what are you telling me? That it's available on iTunes and SoundCloud and YouTube? No, it's because you said they don't want the dive. And I said, no, they want you. No, I know. I was, yeah, just being the show. Oh, I thought you didn't get it. No, I didn't hear the dive part, actually. I <laughs> oh, see? I knew you didn't get it. 
Because then you'd be like, ha ha, yes, funniest joke I've ever heard. And you didn't say Is that what you need from me? Is that the kind of support you need from this yes. podcast co-host relationship? It is. Also, I like the dive, but still. We need a European one. Anyway. Man, that one felt so flat. It was, yeah. It was I thought flat. it was so funny in the moment. No, I mean, it was, I thought it was clever. You know, the visual's hard. Comedy is hard. Right. I think, I think, guys, I think we need to make Deficio feel better. Does anyone? No, just, no, no, no. Can we no, just no. get a really big, like, fake haha -ha for Deficio? That now he's just making it worse. <laughs> Thank you guys. I made me feel better though. <laughs> I know it's a great joke. You guys should all go oh, oh, watch the movie. Oh, oh, oh. So funny. I appreciate you, crowd. You uh, smart. You loyal. Fun fact, uh, one of the things that increased uh, Quickshot and my synergy yeah. was that in the past, when I said something Quickshot liked, he used to mute when he was laughing. Oh, and so now there would be very unmutes. awkward silence. Yeah, true. And I'd be like, oh, now that sounded bad. But now he just makes sure he never mutes and he just laughs really loudly. <laughs> he does laugh so loudly. He does. All right, Spishio. Well, good news for uh, Schalke is that they brought the gold difference down a little bit. They have gotten the turret back for themselves. It's only a 1K difference. A lot of that is going to be the GP Club to Mancy. But they're still going up against two Infernal Dragons. Uh-huh. And they still have to be very scared for Vizichachi because they can still Camille Galio combo. Exactly. That combo will never be bad in this game. We'll almost always secure a kill for Splice unless Kabi can, like, not Kabi, Upset can shoot or I'm gonna back out so maybe he can jump, or there's a stopwatch. Because that is the one thing I've noticed as a carry against the Camille Gallio combo, because you're with your team, when they jump you and you're like, okay, this is gonna hurt. If you have stopwatch, it buys you enough time to then let Vander come in with his ulti. There's probably gonna be a rocket shield as well. And if you survive the initial engage from Gallio Camille, they're pretty easy to kill. They're fairly squishy, and then you can actually win the fights. Really easy to punish it, you're right, if you have the tools to do so. Of course, only one stopwatch available, and it is on upset. So maybe a mid-game team fight can be turned. That's also why I'm going to look at Nuke Duck and see if he goes Hourglass in this game. Despite the combo of Hourglass, all the way is not there. Thank you, Nuke Duck, my man. Oh. Oh. Ooh. 26 health, Oda Wamine says, I'll take that. He's been taking a lot from Charchi in this game. Yeah, look at this. And now he wants to try and kill him. Niski's in range. Ready for the hookshot wall dive. Oh, oh you put it. Niski put a control ward, realized he was spotted. Didn't go for it. But Nuke Duck did go for that early hourglass. And again, as I was about to say, the old hourglass combo is dead. It's at patch 8.3. But the hourglass versus Camille Galio engage. Still a good choice. Always works. No more safe escapes. Can still fancy footwork your way out. Probably not as likely against the Oh, they're going to die. Oh. There's a Chachi running. Is he actually gonna make it out? Oh, Hookshot wall dive. Oh, Flash! Nice play. Oh, oh, Wamne oh, running. He's still tanking the tower. He's still tanking it. Nope. He's gonna make it to safety. Sliver of life left for Odawamne. He was on the verge of dying there for that dive, and Upset and Vander want to make sure that they finish the kill. They have oh, the leap sneaky. ready. You can attach a stun to that Tristana and bring it home. Not gonna chase any further on to Nisqy. Ah, though. they were looking for wards. That was it. Sweeper was on from Vander's side. Knew they couldn't go for the kills. Sadly for them, there's nothing else they can do in the map because we're only 21 minutes in and you can't really four man the Baron instantly. They really like warding up one little line on the map. There's like so many red wards in just a single line from Raptor Camp past the mid lane brush. I'm not sure why they're so scared of that one little area. Neither am I, Deficio. Why would you stay away? But Cobb is on wave clear duty. He has hit the two item threshold matched now by upset, which is a little unfortunate because the IE static shift does do so much. And Nuke Duck. Man, this is just becoming more and more the European classic. So many players have been hiding in bushes today. Well, that's why Cobb doesn't fall for it. He's seen it all before. Niski could also TP in, worst case. Oh, trying to catch Cobb sleeping. Oh, oh, they see him. Everyone sees everyone on top side because there's a million wards. They're just looking, man. They're waiting. They're testing the waters. They want to see if you're too busy thinking about okay. that third item. They love this little area here. It's really watered by Schalke. Yeah, there's a lot of those zombie wards, so a lot of those could be cleared out from the enemy, too. In the meantime, Xerxes sees. He might sees get the, the wards. Uh, never mind, Chachi did not go down. So we kind of still the point in the game where Schalke wants to keep stalling, stalling, stalling. They want to get Rapid Fire Cannon on Tristana. They want to get Serex on the GP and make sure that Chachi doesn't die more in the side lane. 
Looks like, uh, wait, Kabi, why is Kabi, what, what's Kabi doing? Kabi is gonna get stunned. And now Pride is on the way as well. He does manage to connect with the flash forward, brings him back. This is gonna make it easy for Nuke Duck. He's trying to find a clear way through the creeps and does get the kill in the end. Man, Kabi, half your team went back to base. No one was there to help you and Kabi just started pushing the lane all on his own. He got punished instantly. Nuke Duck is like, yeah, that's an A to carry and out of position. Odd misstep from Kabi. We talked about how consistent he is. And this is that's a rare mistake. That's another European classic though, one more wave. You always need one more wave before you go back to base. It's like in Ziff, you always need one more turn. You can never just stop. Gotta get more farm, and then you gotta die and lose a turret for your team. Okay. Yeah, give him that, give him applause for that one. Yeah. He stopped the backs. They're chasing the fight. It actually is a good choice, Deficio. Let's see if it is. Odawamne is on the way in. They have the ability to knock him back. With and he doesn't want to take it. It wasn't a good choice. There we go. Guys, he didn't want to go. That one, yeah. Good job, Kasim. They want to kill that he warrior. He denied the backs. The team made the call. They tried to go for it, and then they realized, ah, it's Kristana with an hourglass and still has ultimate, so she's just going to ult us away. Listen, it made sense. It, it just looked really funny. Like, he wasn't even close to hitting. But again, he stopped the recalls. You are correct. It's like a Rekos. super alpha move, though. That's the, the true zoning ult. It says, get away from this spot that you're not actually standing on or have any intention to stand on. Didn't work sadly for Spice this time, and they had to use TP for Mortal Amna, so that kind of sucks for them. Can always put Niski in the bottom side if they want to, because we are looking around Baron soon. And interesting, confident enough in their lead that they're going to opt to put Zersei on the Trinity Force Jax as opposed to going for the full tank build. Well, one thing we do see is Trinity Force Warmarks. And then you're like, uh, Warmarks just becomes your early tank item, because you can't get both magic and armor. A magic resist and armor, so you just get pure HP and warm And to be fair, Jax really has built in uh, yeah, yeah, of on course. his ultimate, on his in terms of MR and armor. So that so. would make a lot of sense for him if that's what he goes for, or he goes for Sterics now, and it is the classic, the one we see in GP, Trinity Force Sterics, which just gives you a ton of extra damage in team fights, but is of course not as tanky as a pure Warmox. Now it is Spice turn though to ward up everything on top side, smack the Rift Scuttler in the face. Will they go Baron early and base that beta fight? It is a no for now, and they have not been able to further snowball bottom side. So the whole thing is kind of slowed down for Splice, which is not what they were looking for, because there's a rapid fire cannon now on the Tristana. We've seen this point before, Deficio. This is the, that three item point that people team seem to talk about a lot with AD carries. That's a terrifying proposition for the opposing team. Yeah, this is actually what turned the game around yesterday for Shalgo. When we had three items on upset. He won the next team fight for them, and they came back in the game against Misfit. And the fact that the stopwatch is still sitting there, crucial for the first big team fight of the game. And really scary too, because Splice went from having a pretty substantial lead, from snowballing, from playing to their win conditions, to a very even game against a team that really does just want to scale, and is now playing with a lot more confidence from losing across all side lanes to suddenly being free to group in the mid lane. And uh, Odam, no TP, he's bot lane. Shalga, if they push mid and go Baron, Odam can't join. It is definitely a possibility for the Schalke team. You can always tank with the Zac. But Ramne is sitting here. Trinity Force means he does make short work of the towers. Vizachachi is there, but he can't afford to be missing from that lane for too long, or they will lose a tier two. But now, top is pushing for Schalke. Nukta can walk down towards mid lane, always get the play again. He wants it. Can he make his way out? Is going to orange and flash out. Clears the wave as well with the cannon barrage. Does deal a little bit more damage onto Oda Wamne. He knows that only one member can really afford to die. Backs out, no kills either side. Banner ready to go in, but no one going to make the play yet. Interesting that the last time we saw this play, Chachi had flash, and he used it to get away. Now, they waited so long that he got flash again, and had the exact same reaction as before. Flashes out, stays alive. Ooh, Odom. Odo. He realized he got a barrel in his face. Does not want to go in there. And the stair gauge, of course, is down. Rise coming in with the Realm War. But Wamne just goes for the hookshot wall dive over. Quick, easy escape. It's a little bit surprising that Shalgit did not try and play around Baron more when Odomne was sitting bot lane without teleport. Uh, Nukedark had actually pushed top and could have gone mid to force the control, but he decided to take a more defensive uh, path towards it. Nonetheless, yeah. Schalke with control. Yeah, and tempo in their favor. They're actually going to look to take down this tier two. Only one member there thus far. Camille is coming over the wall, though, so Upset does have to be careful here. Going to give them the respect they deserve. Cersei threatening to engage. And sadly, didn't really have any wards in their inventory, so they're not able to get a lot of deep vision here yet in the side of Splice. Oh, Focusing. That might be the pick. They're looking to bring it home. 
Unbreakable, but how unbreakable is he really? Upset leaps past, tries to get through the shield. Is gonna take him down in the end. Nice pick comes in for Shalka. Gonna get a turret. They might actually try and go for something more here because they have three members mid lane from Splice. Chachi's there to try and wave clear. Ready, the Galio's coming as well. They're looking for the base race, but this isn't a good bet. That's Tristana. She's built to take towers. She's gonna take one now. They may look for the inhibitor as well. This is gonna be a huge advantage. And Niski will get mid tower at least, but they're losing a lot from this. One pick on to Kasing. Zerze was kind of running back and forth near the mid lane, didn't know if he had to recall or not. And they still can't kill Chachi. So they Chachi get denying Niski's turn. back. Everyone is healthy. They can go right for Baron right now. Oh, Udo's TP is up in a few seconds, so he can join. Kasing is coming as well. I think all of Spice are trying to be there in time. Niski can join. All right. Shaka's starting it. This Baron could be everything. Looks like instead they're going to look to try to make a pick. Just backing off, trying to bait some cooldowns. All spamping this war. Yeah, because they want the teleport flank and Shaka know about it, so they're backing off. Shaka gonna be forced to clear out the wave on the bottom side as it will be pushing towards them. Maybe this is a chance for Splice to put down a little bit of vision in that pit. Make sure this is not gonna go out without their knowledge. I think it's a bit harder for Splice though now. Because when they're playing around Baron, Ideally, with their comp, they get to flank engage with Odo, so he always gets to reach offset in the back line. They're starting it. Chachi can TP in, so they force the TP at least. That's all they were looking for, actually. Just force the TP, walk away. Good patient play around the Baron. And now they could send Niski bot lane after this whole thing is over. He pushes out, and if Chachi's there to match, Spice goes Baron, and Niski TPs in. It is a possibility. None of the teams have really committed to Baron yet in this game, which is again why we haven't really had the big team fight that could be forced around it. Neither team wants to make a mistake here because we we can see right now in the Splice lineup that they're gonna have struggle. They're gonna struggle to clear out Baron and Power Cannon creeps. But Splice gonna grab their fourth dragon of the game completely and totally uncontested. So double infernal a cloud and an ocean to back them up now. However, Upset has hit that even more terrifying for item point. No longer is he scared of the tank eater members in Xerxes and Odawamne. He can tread through just about anybody on this team. So Spice really fighting against the clock here. May have to make sure to shut down Upset if they're going to find a fight. But he still has the Hourglass to Fischio. Yeah, he's just been sitting on it. Again, we, we mentioned how it's super important to have this for the next team fight against Camille Gallio. And both teams looking for that one fight that swings the game in their favor. We know both of them. Oh, let's see what happens oh, here. Could be another pick on a Kasing. Has he stayed too far? Unbreakable is there. The Gangplank ult is on the backside. They're trying to save him with the Galio. Nuke Duck does go golden now, backing off. Cosmic Threading is coming in, trying to save the team as they peel back. Bando oh! on the front line, the triple stun. Upset pushing more. No one's going to drop down yet. Camille on the way. Gangplank on the way. Who's going to make their way into this fight next? Stunned up. No Cosmic Radiance anymore. No way to save Upset. Does still have the stopwatch for himself. Nobody died, but Schalke, they're near the Baron. Got to remember the Terra heal on Baron is insane because you can just constantly spam heal. There's enough mana on Van Van aside. I think they realized that Spice uh, would stay around and they can't actually do it. Backing off, big wave pushing bot side. They might be able to grab a tier two for free off the back of this exchange for Splice. This game is going to be tense. Two teams is by no means you know sure to make playoffs just yet. Two teams where it would be a giant failure, I feel like, for the organization if they do not make top six. You guys can see the Spice and Shalk are currently tied five and six at that fifth place spot. Underneath them, H2K and Unicorns both picked up wins today. Lose this, and next week they might tie you. Definitely the case. Now, Deficio, I think we look across the board, and I have to wonder what exactly is the best option for Splice here, because every time you look at me, we point to upset. We go, when is that next item coming in? When is it going to be full build? Mm. And it's until Splice take away that stopwatch, it's hard for me to be 100% confident they can even win a fight cleanly. I think after the stopwatch, he could go for GA, just upgrade into that, and then have that for his... Uh Next team fight, where in case they do take him down with the all in of Camille Gallio, he gets back. I can still fight, and that locket is going to be key from Vander as well. His own shield plus the locket plus the healing plus the Terrigal. Like, Terrigal is like the best late game support uh, for these kind of team fights, where it's all about enemy team diving your backline. His ult just comes down every single time. 
I mean, the good news, if you're on the side of Spice, is you have a lot of burst damage. You have a Jax who's building AD items, the Styrax Trinity Force. But that's the thing, you can't burst through the Tarek, so eventually these squishy guys, like full AP Galio, Tank, also DPS, Camille, and Jax, like, they die pretty quickly to a Ryze and an Tristan Lake. Oh, they're in the Baron pit. Yeah, the invade into the Baron pit. The TP is now coming in. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Niski and Oduwamne in the middle of the pit? They're trying to complete it. He immediately goes in on the upset. Upset's going to push it back. Has not used the stopwatch oh, yet. Niski tries to bring it back. They do manage to take it away. Baron has gone down. Nuke Duck running for his life. The rest of the team, it's absolute chaos. Nuke Duck's going to die here at the hands of Splice. Kuzachaji could be next. They're going to cut through him as well. No, he's retreating. Trying to get what damage he can. This is absolute disaster for Shalka. Uh, everything has fallen apart. Schalke used the Rise ulti into the Baron pit to try to rush it down, but Zerse last second got in there and stole the Baron. And then they win the fight because Schalke is just split up completely. Zag is gonna die. They got three members pushing for him. It's only Chachi alive. 47 seconds on Pride, 30 on Upset. They might just be able to end the game here. They have the creep wave. Gangplank needs to clear it out, but they could just threaten the dive. Oh, and it's not Blice, do they feel good? They're just gonna go right in on Vizichachi. Look at the Camille damage. Vizichachi runs for his life. He has been bullied away. They're going to get at least one tower. The Baron and Power Cannon Creep will not get in range of the tower, though. It's going to be a little bit difficult. Five seconds right now on Nuke Duck. He's almost alive. Chuck trying to kill it. Trying to take it down. The TP now coming in for the rest of the team. Vander is here. Can they kill the 80 carry before this ends? It doesn't look like it's Splice! What a win! I was expecting a 60 minute long game of Baron Bates into a few team by team there back and forth because this game was slow in many ways. As one team tried to keep killing side lanes and then when that kind of stopped, Shalke took over a little bit. None of the teams really abused like big windows in their favor, but it was Shalke who rushed the Baron. It was technically a fine call with the Rise whole team. They just didn't know about the single ward. I. It might have been. I don't. Deficio. We have to see that play again. We have to see it again. And at the end of the day, no matter what happened there, we have to congratulate Splice. Incredibly decisive in a very critical moment. Oh, yes. Schalke currently only one win ahead. And we were wondering, you know, putting their faith in Odawamne over and over again on this Camille, but. They did you play can't. around it. And I like that. A lot of teams have tried to do this, and then they're like, nah, I never want to go top. That's for losers. I want to go bot lane instead, and then it's useless. But they did actually do it, which got Oda Amla pretty far ahead. And Schalke managed to come back. But then when it mattered most, they were able to pull it together. I've been told we do have a replay now ready of the final fight, and as the Splice players hug it out and enjoy their moment of victory, we'll take a look at it. Okay, so it is Rise Old into the Baron pit. Great to rush it down there. Oh, they had vision the whole time. Yeah, but the Kissing is recalling. Uh, Galio is not even nearby. I think even with vision there, the play is okay from Shalga. Obviously, you want to have a control what that catches the entire pit. Let's see the fight. So now they have to finish Baron. Zersek, go! Oh, oh, no. Got it. And now the fight is on. Nuke Dog is completely split from the rest of the team. And he walks face first to the Kissing. So he, he's down now. Upset jumps out, hits. One member there doesn't kill anyone, doesn't manage to kill Kobe, and oh, now he dead. finds himself overextended. Oh, man. That's it, Davicio. That's all it takes is if, if they just hit the smite. Would it have even been enough? I, would they have just died in that pit? They might not have lost the game, but... I mean, it's hard to say because then right after, you know, Nuke Duck gets split off from the team, and then suddenly he goes down while the fight is still on, and... Spice was in a good position because one team is stuck in a Baron pit, and you can put your tanks in the entrance. And it turns out Camille, Alt, and Galio Alt very close to the size of a Baron pit. Yes. I mean, it's a dream setup. And I, I, I didn't expect this game to end. I was ready like to this. scale. Yeah, I was like, we're here for another 30 minutes of just back and forth fighting. Yeah, and I'm excited because we're, we're getting ready for an interview with Kasing, and I want to see how he felt. I bet I wonder if he was also expecting a 60-minute game, like if he thought that we were just going to go back and forth and back and forth. I think it was his great shot calling, saying when they go also, into the Baron we, we pit. We criticized him for being late, but then because he came in late, Nuke Duck is like retreating like, ah, I've made it out safe, <laughs> yeah. guys. Don't worry. This. So oh, hey. Kasing is here. Remember that alt that I threw to zone you? <laughs> All abate. False sense of confidence. Oh, man. This game, uh, interesting. Uh, I think I like Odomus Camille. I'll I say did. that much. I like Kasing's Brahm. Let's hear what he has to say after that splice win.
what I hope he has to say something. Kasim, congratulations about this game. Really back and forth. Uh, how do you explain the end of this game? What made the difference in the end for you to win this one? Um, to be honest, I think we're just a better team than Schalke. Like, I don't know where this hype comes from, but you oh. know, I think as a team or as a cohesive unit, as five like players, maybe not like, how do I say it? Even though it's, we're kind of alike with like really good individual players, but I think at Splice, we're just much better as five players, pretty much. And I have one question about the sides of the game, because I recall you have a hard time winning on blue side, except today, of course. Why do you think that's so? I mean, pre, like prior to this match, we had like 0% on blue side yeah. for some reason. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to really say or go into too much detail, apart from like some games we basically Fuck up. Oh, sorry. Can't say that. Sorry. We basically do bad. We didn't hear that. It's okay. <laughs> like, basically, we don't execute our comp correctly. And then after, we kind of lose the game and pretty much, you know, we just lose the game and there's nothing else we can do. And not to mention, there are some picks that, like, we think are not that good, but then are actually good. And then mm -hmm. after, you know, we basically can't read the meta properly. And then after, we, yeah, we just did some minor hiccups. One last question for you. It's going to be a really hyped match after the break. G2 versus Fnatic. Who will take it for you? I mean, honestly... Be careful, because they're waiting for you. <laughs> right. don't, don't hate me. Uh, <laughs> don't hate me, Fnatic fans. But uh, I think G2 will win, because of Yana. Yeah, that's it. And I think the crowd agree with you, agrees what? with you. I'm sorry. We're going to take a short break. And then when we come back, it's going to be match of the week. Fnatic versus G2. Don't go anywhere.